Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you all about database transactions and why they're such a critical concept in database systems. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to go over what a transaction is. I'm going to show you what a transaction is using a practical example. And I'm also going to explain to you why transactions as a concept are so important in databases. Uh, so let's get right into it and first talk about what a transaction is. Let me just start by scrolling down a little bit here to make some room. Now it's a simple way of explaining what a transaction is. You can just basically think of it as a unit of work in database language. Sometimes you hear it in shorthand form, which is TX, uh, TX for short. Um, typically people say this when they're referring to transactions. Uh, so if we think of this as a unit of work, let's just draw a box around this thing. So in this unit of work, there could be multiple changes on multiple different rows in different tables that occur all at once. So say for instance, if we have two different tables and we want to perform two different operations. In the first table, we want to do an insert, insert. And in the second table, we want to do an update, an update. So in this example, this unit, so these two things together is what is considered a transaction. And an important concept or an important trait of a transaction is the fact that these two things must either succeed or fail together as a unit. So what I mean by that is that in this example, you can't have a scenario where you, you're successfully insert data into one of your tables, but you fail to update. That's called a partial failure scenario. So this idea is not allowed for something to be considered a transaction. So you cannot have this partial failure scenario. It must be all or nothing. Uh, so let's just scroll down here and explain this using a practical example. So down here I have a bank account table. And in this table, we have two bank accounts. We have one with a balance of $200 and another with a balance of $800 like we see here. Uh, so say we want to do a uh, fund transfer. So we want to move the $200 from the first account to the second account. Now, how would we do this? Well, we need to do two separate things, right? We need to, in one swoop, we need to decrement $200 off of the first row to move that $200 out. And then we need to increment the second account or the second row by $200. And you can start to see what I mean here when I say all or nothing, because there's two distinct actions that are occurring. In this case, it's happening on the same table, but that's not always necessarily the case. Maybe there's multiple tables uh, that you want to perform this kind of operation on, or maybe there's a third element here. You want to kind of create a uh, transfer request in some other separate table. But in this example, we only have two things and these two things need to succeed either together or fail together. So you can't have a scenario where you only decrement the first row or the first column, but you do increment the second because you'd have a mismatch, right? So if you don't decrement this and you increment this, the balance here would be equal to a thousand and this would still be 200. And magically, whoever owns this bank account suddenly gets $200 for free. Um, so that is not allowed for something to be considered a transaction. So using that same model as before, if we're drawing a box around this, and this being a transaction, so TX for short, what you would have is two operations. One is a decrement of $200 on the uh, first account, and the second is an increment of $200 on the second account. So these two things either must succeed or must fail. You can't have the scenario where one succeeds and the other fails or any combination such as that. Uh, so that's kind of an example of what a transaction is. Now, when people talk about transactions, there's a couple other um, kind of concepts that go with it. You usually hear the term ACID, A-C-I-D. And I don't mean the stuff that can burn you. Um, ACID actually means something else in database terms. So A in ACID means atomicity or atomic. Uh, some people call it both. Um, so what it means here is kind of that concept that I was telling you about before that it's either an all or nothing operation. Can't have partial success, can't have partial failure. Every, everything either must succeed or must fail. That is a guarantee if your database conforms to the ACID principle. Uh, the second letter, the C, stands for consistency. 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 And what consistency means is it's kind of related to atomicity, but it's basically that 
Um, the operations that are performed on your database must be done in a predictable way and can only change data in the allowed ways. So for instance, you can't decrement a balance past zero. That would be an inconsistent operation. So it would be violating the constraints or the rules of that table. Uh, so that is not allowed. The I in ACID stands for isolation, isolation. And isolation just basically means that one transaction cannot impact the outcome of another transaction. Now there's a bunch of different ways this is implemented. One common way is through the use of locks. But as a concept, what isolation means is that if there's two different kind of attempts to modify the data on these two rows, uh, so if we have two different transactions that are simultaneously trying to do something similar on these two rows, on these two rows, one of these must succeed. You can't have concurrent updates on the same row um, that is not allowed under a ACID compliant system. Uh, so in this example, if you have two things that are at the same time trying to modify this, this one must succeed and this one must fail, or this one must fail and this one must succeed. Uh, so that is the isolation guarantee. And the last point or the last letter in ACID stands for durability durability ability. and durability basically means that if there's any kind of power outage or loss of state or anything that kind of gets in the way of this database acting as it should um, there's no data loss that comes as a result of it uh, so typically when you hear the term transaction in order for something to be considered a transaction it must satisfy all of these four principles atomicity consistency isolation and durability um, so now that we know what transactions are, I, I briefly want to touch on why this is such an important concept. Uh, and I think it's, it's revealing to kind of talk about what would this look like if you didn't have these principles or you didn't have a concept of a transaction? How would something like this work? How would you modify two different accounts at the same time? And I just want to erase what we have here to kind of demonstrate my point. So let's assume we're back in the beginning now. So we have $200 in this account and $800 in this account. Now, if you're not using a transaction, how would this potentially work? Uh, you have some kind of program out here. Actually, let's get a different color here. Let's get purple. That sounds good. Uh, so say we have a program out here and it's trying to update these two rows independently, right? That's what a, a non-transactional update would look like. So what would this program do? Well, the first thing it would do is, is it would go to this row and subtract 200, right? And the second thing it would do, so that's one. And the second thing it would do is it would go to the second row and try to add 200. And this all looks well and good, but my question for you is what happens if you have a failure scenario? So what happens if this fails, right? If the second transaction fails, right? So what state are you left in? Well, you're left in a state where you subtracted the balance from this row or this account, and now it's at zero, and this account never got incremented, right? So it's still $800. So in turn, your customer essentially lost $200. That disappeared. Now you may say to yourself, oh, we can just add a new transaction or add a new attempt to retry, right? To, to do this again and, and keep on retrying. But there's a whole bunch of problems with that, right? Like retries take time. And in the meantime, this account already got updated with the decremented value. And now at some point later, maybe a few seconds later, you're still trying to increment and correct the action on the second row. In between that time, other operations on these accounts or rows may have already taken place. So this is the problem of not using ACID or not using transactions. It's the idea that partial failure scenarios are very real and dealing with them tends to be very complicated because you need to try and fix what failed or you need to try and reattempt whatever actions you failed to perform during your operation. Uh, so this is why ACID or transactions are such a powerful concept. It's that instead of having to do these two things independently of one another, you can decrement and increment all at once in one go, and you're guaranteed that both of these two things are going to be updated with the correct values. Uh, so that's what transactions are, and that's why they're super important in database systems. So if you like this video, I have many more on cloud technologies, database technologies. I'm going to put some suggestions here on the right. And if you like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.